Thank you for joining us today at Rivers of Living Water Cathedral, 604 Holland Street in Fremont, Ohio. It is my privilege to introduce to you Apostle Dr. Robert L. Jones, who will have this morning's message. Thank you, Reverend Swart, to everyone that have tuned in to listen and to see us. We are so honored to be a part of your day, your morning, Amen. and to share with you a word from the Lord. I'm going to have my wife come at this time, and she's going to share with you some of the verses, the six verses from four different books of the Bible uh, that she's going to read. It'll be a total of six verses, but one will come from Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verse number 30. And then she will go to Galatians, the fifth chapter, verses 22 and 23. Then a verse out of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse number 6. Then she'll finish with Romans, the 16th chapter, verses 7 and 17, I'm sorry, 17 and 18. And our subject today is grieve not the Holy Spirit. Sister Jones. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed until the day of redemption. Galatians 5, chapter 5, verse 22, 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 6. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Romans chapter 16, verse 17, 18. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. Verse 18, For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Thank you, Sister. Well, 
Did you know that the Holy Spirit is a person that can feel the pain and the anguish over a believer's persistent act or acts that doesn't reflect or line up with his or her confession of Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. So when a believer's life and actions doesn't line up to or with true Christianity, it grieves the Holy Spirit. When your life and behavior towards one another does not reflect the fruit of the Spirit for one another as listed. And Sister Joan, she read it in Galatians from the fifth chapter of Galatians. But as it is listed in Galatians, as I said, if a, if a believer or a believer does not reflect the fruit of the Spirit towards one another, as listed in Galatians 5 and 22 and 23, that says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. If that love towards others is not shown, you know that can grieve the Holy Spirit, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness towards others. Do you know if that is not shown, it can grieve the Holy Ghost. Yeah. We're commanded, grieve not. the Holy Spirit. You see, since grief is often a feeling because of a close relationship to someone, as like in the natural, well, likewise, our relationships in the spiritual to someone that confesses to be a Christian but persistently fails to live up to that confession, you see, that will cause the Holy Spirit to be grieved, to be very hurt because of the ungodly behavior that even we might have towards each other. Amen. Ephesians 4 and 30 does not give us a suggestion, but point blank tells us what Grieve not. not the Holy Spirit. So any form of constant disobedience, rebellion by us will bring, will bring grief to the Holy Spirit. And don't be deceived. If your actions are not corrected, let's say by you, you will be dealt with eventually because you as yet a child of God is yet loved by God. And Hebrew tells us what? In 12 and 6 that who God loves. He disciplines when discipline is needed. 
who he loves, he corrects where correction is needed. The leaders of the church and boards and the people on the board often have to come across and, and say, well, this is not acceptable. That doesn't give you the right to go and speak evil of them because they're trying to keep the unity of the spirit and the bonds of peace. So often, even the leadership have to say, well, that behavior is not acceptable. Brother, sister, we love you like a brother or sister. But that behavior is causing problems. And it's not acceptable. Now, often when that happens, it's going to be one of two reactions. It's going to be a loving thank you. Or you might be called a devil or a demon because they don't want to accept correction. Hmm? I told you all of God's word is good. I'm taking all this out of God's word. Well, as I said, any form of constant disobedience or Division. Brother Steve talked on it last Sunday. Things that people do to bring division in their house. Don't be deceived. If you don't take proper action yourself to deal with certain things, the authority of the house for the sake of the fellowship, the people, the work of the ministry for would-be believers. We have to take proper direction to deal with in a godly way or in a parental way. You ever see Parents do things in parental ways and the children rebel. The parent is doing it in a parental way. You ever heard parents even say this when they are about to spank you? This is going to hurt me. <laughs> what? More. It hurts you. Uh, well, Dad, let's uh, equal off this thing. Uh, you have a switch, and give me a switch too, so we can kind of equal this thing. You give me one too, and, uh, you know, see which one's going to be hurt the most. You. <laughs> so I urge you to correct yourself as a child of God. That he loves us. Yes. He loves you. Yes. Yes. And he'll give you room. Listen. <laughs> you know, God gives more room than what we ourselves would give for people to correct things. <laughs> but I so urge you to correct yourself as a child of God that he loves before he has to finally and he will discipline and correct you because he loves you. How many times has your parent, your mom and dad, I'm doing, I'm doing this because I love you. <laughs> and and, and and then my dad even had the nerves to say, see if 
if uh, that if I don't with you, who love you, there's people that don't love you that's paid to beat you. As I said, grief comes out of relationship whereby relationships whereby something tragic may have happened to someone close to you. So the Holy Spirit, listen, does not have the same kind of feeling of sorrow for, let's say, sinners who are not, uh, though he loved them, though he cared, he may have that, not have the same type, the same kind of sorrow that he has for people that's a part of the family. That's right. That's right. He may not have the same kind of a grief for all our sinners, though he's a spirit of love, but, but for him, because of your position with the family of the Lord, he has a special kind of love. And when you don't line up, it brings grief to him. And if you find yourself straying in given direction that you should not be in, it grieves the Holy Ghost. It grieves him. So as you are, are a part of the family of God, since you are a child of God, since you are a part of the body of Christ, so as a part of the body, your strain, your disobedience, your failure, to comply grieves the Holy Spirit. And again, the word tells us. Don't suggest it, it tells us. Yeah. Grieve not the Holy Spirit. You see, I recall the grief that I had when my second born, my son, died was, he was five months old, just beautiful son. Your mother just called him a beautiful angel. He was so beautiful. Your mother said, when I saw him in church, it's just like I was looking at the most beautiful angel. That's your mother told me. I could, she said, I couldn't take my eyes off of him. Well, the next morning, out of nowhere, was it sick or anything? So unexpectedly, passed away. I was in corporate America then working a position in Toledo. And my, my, the boss of the department came to me and said, Bob, you need to go home. And um, he, he said, just go home. strong relationship with my son. In fact, my he died on the day after my wife's birthday. And my wife and her mother and my firstborn daughter went out to just enjoy her birthday. And I said, well, I'll stay home with my son. 
that was the time that Sammy Davis Jr. was doing the song, The Candy Man Can. Yes, The Candy Man, because The Candy Man uh, mixes it with love and makes the world taste good. So that song came on, and I'm singing the song to my son. Now, that's not what killed him, I'm sure. But I'm singing the song <laughs> to my son. <laughs> and instead of saying Candy Man, because they called him Andy, his name was Robert Andrew, not a junior, I'm Robert Lee, that was Robert Andrew. And I'm singing the song, and when it came to the Candy Man, I said, The Andy Man can. Oh, yes, the Andy Man can, because the Andy Man mix it with. Miss it with love that makes the world taste good. And he's just giggling and giggling and having the best time. Oh, it just, just, just living on my son. It was just a time for me and my son. And I left for work in the morning and everything was so good. And get the call and went home to find out. So you can imagine the grief. But let me tell you something about another kind of grief. That was a natural grief because of relationship with my son. And that tragic thing of death that came to get him so early. However, there was another kind of grieving time for me that came out of a spiritual loss of relationship when brothers and sisters in Christ of the church who I thought was one with me in spirit and in covenant relationship. When a group so betrayed me as pastor. And tried to split the rivers of living water church. The grief of that because of relationship. Oh, it crushed. Yeah, I was so grieved. I said, how could this happen? What happened? My love for the people, my love for the church, my working with them. And I thought, what happened? How could this be? My thoughts of being in good relationship with them. I truly thought we were truly family in the Lord. But somewhere in there, the ugly spirit of division crack into the church as we had our guard down. There was no need to have a new guard up because when you're feeling one in the Lord, you have to have the guard up. So my guard towards everybody was down. You just don't have your guard up because you trust one another. You believe in one, one another. You feel in covenant with one another. You have the other person's back. People that grief that me and my wife suffer was like grief that we never had before, with, even with the passing of our son. That was a spiritual relationship that was lost, that was broken. But out of that great grief and deep hurt and the feeling of not being able to trust people again because of my broken heart. 
I went to the Word of God. And I read in the book of Luke, the 18th chapter, and I was reminded that the Holy Spirit sent Jesus yes. to heal what? The broken heart. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. And when I got around the church people, you all, you have such encouraging words. You just didn't let me wallow in grief. You begin to build. Speak encouraging words to me. I went to our, our pastor in Toledo, Pastor Rudy, Deacon Heyman. They begin to just uh, in Rossford, they just begin to just build me up and build me up about ministering to her. And through you all, through them, my heart was being mended, lifted. Then I went on to say that not only was he sent to heal the broken heart, heart but also to preach deliverance. Yes. I needed deliverance. I needed deliverance from that feeling of being so hurt. Now, through it all, through it all, I can, where I thought I could never trust again, when healing came, when deliverance came, I was able to trust. Because see what failure to trust does, it makes you not want to trust anybody. Because they're going to to do, others are going to do the same thing. So, there's broken relationships because of what happened to one person. Now you are going to feel that other people are going to do the same thing to you. Anybody be blessed for with this message? Amen. I had to be delivered from what happened to me so that my action towards them would not be of such actions whereby I would grieve the Holy Spirit. Pastor and Deacon Rudy said to me and my wife down in their home, their lovely home, and Rothman said, Pastors, everyone that was watching you, you have sheep to shepherd. And they're going to have their eyes on you about how are you going to handle them. So, as I was being ministered to, they were helping me so that my reaction, no matter how right and just I thought that I was in my decisions, that yet my actions would not be of such towards them that it would cause the Holy Spirit to be grieved at me because how I did them and beginning to distrust other people. So, I had to be delivered. And the Holy Spirit came to do that. Reminding me that never forget, never forget that you are not responsible for how people treat you but you are responsible 
for how you treat them. Never let ill treatment by others towards you make you sink so low to grieve the Holy Spirit by trying to get back at them. Make sure your heart, make sure that, that in your heart you are truly a Christian. That's right. Make sure in your heart, in your behavior, in your thought life, no matter what happens, the Lord said, bless me, that despitefully use you. Bless them that curse you. When you do it, then your actions will never breathe the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So the song says, Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. Lord, I want to love everybody in my heart. Lord, I want to be a Christian. Remember that song? In my heart. Always remember that although you can't treat everyone alike, You can treat everyone right. Now forget that. Though you may not be able to treat everyone alike, and that's based on a lot of different things, but you can truly make sure you are treating everyone right. In my closing, I do want to say this. However, with everything I said, however, Romans 16, the 16th chapter and the 17th, 18th verse instruct us as church workers and leaders of how to correctly, correctly, according to the word, according to the scripture, handle individuals in the church that cause division. Look, look at it up there. Now I beseech you, brethren, to point them out. I'm not trying to embarrass people, but certainly people have to know because even young sheep that don't know the danger of what some people are trying to do may find themselves sucked up into the grips of those that really don't have the heart of the church. So it says, now I beseech you, I beg you, brother, mark them. That's God's word. Yes. They're not trying to be nasty. You're trying to save a flock. You're trying to protect the people that God have given you leadership over. Deacons, you have a role to play in leadership to care for his people. And you have to mock those that cause division. Yes, we want to see correction, but after a time when it's over and over and over again, the same thing, it's like the people are playing games with you and seeing how much they can get away with. Mark them. This is God's word. Yes. Well, that means if I can find a better translation, ain't no better translation than that. That's right. Very plain. It's plain. Mark them. Which cause divisions. 
which cause division and offensive contrary to the word, the doctrine, the teaching, the ordinances that you learn. Well, how far should I go then after I'm not Avoid. Avoid them. What? The Bible says a little bit of leaven leavens the whole lot. We, listen, if we let a little bit of rot stay there, it's going to cause other things to rot. It's going to contaminate. What does the next verse say? For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, they're not serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, what are they serving? But their own belly. They are serving their own desires. And by good words and fair speech. So through their own cleverness of things, deceive the hearts of the sinners. They can kind of rope you in and even make you feel guilty if you're not doing something for them. Nothing. So for the benefit of the world. I remember the words that my first pastor that sent me on my first assignment said to me. I was in my very early 20s. Bishop James said to me. He said, son, you can start with anything but you cannot build with anything. So sometimes things that we, there's some, I, a lot of folks that I started with in the early years, I had to deal, I had to, Lord Jesus, had to deal. And then you know what God did, uh, gave me and my wife after that? Children. We built the church with children like Jalen, like your dad, but that was about 15 years old when he came to our church. A lot of young men and young women came and began to seek God. Yes. And out of that, they became little evangelists, and the church began to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. Though I started with, with what I had to start with, I couldn't feel. There came a separation. I had to separate from that group that I started with. And from out of a bunch of young folk, teenagers, teenagers when, when their parents saw the change that the church put in their children's life, they came to church, parents came to church, joined the church. So, so that, that some of the parents uh, uh, that joined the church became preachers and, and, and deacons and you name it. But we took the, the youth and built a word. Hallelujah. So though you can start with anything, don't let anything bully and pressure you to think without me you ain't going nowhere. Okay. So as we work to build the things of God we have to be very, very careful. Look, look for what the word says. Uh, for they that are of such do what? Serve God. They do not serve God. Lord Jesus Christ. But their own They come across all religious, but they're not truly serving Jesus Christ. But their own 
better. And by cleverness of words, and because of their ability to pull you in, they can deceive the heart. And when I'm going to say it's of the simple, it means young, unsuspected, people that's not so deeply rooted in the things of God yet. And they're not saying that they're dumb, that's not what they're saying. And they're young, they're, they're impressionable. Okay? You can't have that. Your church, if you're, look, if you're looking to me out there, as you have tuned in, leaders, you have to understand that there's so much harm. Nobody comes to church more than the devil. He beats the preacher to the church. He has some prime seats in church. And he will use whoever he can to try to disrupt the work of the Lord. So you have churches and have works that God has called you to. Do not be so eager to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow that you're not watching what's coming among you and how you're growing and who you're putting in position. Because once you make somebody something, it is so difficult to unmake them from what you made them. So you can't, you have to be careful of your responsibility. Now let me end up by, by saying this though. If as leaders you can grieve the Holy Spirit by not bringing Correction to the house when and where needed. There'll be the Holy Spirit too. Amen. Yes, sir. So I think along the way I'm going to have to the Holy Spirit by not many times. You know, sometimes we just so full of love we don't do. We just we, well let me give him another chance. You, you, you know, you, and 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 sometimes we. Build that uh, around the, the parable that said, well, just go and, and dig and dump around that uh, again and give a little more time. And, well, listen now, after a while, uh, you don't run out of dump. <laughs> so grieve not. The Holy Spirit. This message has come because we in leadership have to make sure the house of God is being built correctly. The right balance in the Spirit. So it does not become a mockery. So it don't become the laughing joke of a community. So for you that have tuned in, please understand and pray over the word that we've been given direction by the Holy Spirit to share with you on this morning. The last words that I have to say for you is not a suggestion, but it's a commandment. Grieve not the Holy Spirit.
the spirit. We will not grieve the spirit. Go to our website, rolwohio.com, and you can link to any of our social media posts. You can link to our PayPal account. You can also link to us through email. Join us next Sunday at 10 a.m. for time of family worship. Come Tuesday morning at 11.30 a.m. or Wednesday evening at 6.30 p.m. Both times we have a Bible study and we are studying the book, Love Not the World. So until next week, remember, there is no God like our God. No way.